I've been collecting records for years. I even worked in a record store once. So I understand the importance of having the right equipment to truly bring your favorite songs to life. So here I am talking to you about a beautiful bit of kit that's going to make listening to your records even better. This is the Alva ST, a turntable that we've designed to make it as easy as possible to enjoy your most loved albums on vinyl. Most of the complicated calibration is done by the experts at our factory, but there are a couple of relatively simple steps you need to follow in order to get started. Firstly, figure out where you're going to place your turntable. A turntable is an entirely mechanical method of music reproduction, from the stylus that tracks the grooves to the motor that spins it. It can be sensitive to outside influences, so we recommend placing your turntable on a flat surface away from any potential sources of vibration. We don't package the turntable with the platter attached, it's heavy, and we wouldn't want it moving around during transit and causing damage. Place the platter on the base plate over the spindle and attach the belt over the motor, before then putting the rubber mat on top. Once you've completed this step, you won't need to lift the platter again, as speed control is handled by these two electronic buttons, so you can effortlessly switch between playing albums and singles. Next, attach the head shell to the tone arm and tighten the collar. The last piece that needs attaching is the tone arm counterweight. We leave this off to save the tone arm from undue stress in the box. All you need to do is simply push and rotate onto the thread. The next thing is to set the tracking force. This is the pressure that the stylus applies to the record. Now, too much pressure and the stylus won't track the grooves properly, which can cause distortion and lost information, as well as avoidable wear to your precious records. Too little pressure and the stylus will jump and could potentially damage your collection. We don't want that, so you can see the value in getting it right. A correctly set counterweight makes sure the stylus was properly in the groove of the record and you use this force gauge to get the right balance. The tracking force required varies by tone arm and cartridge. With the Alva ST, the tone arm and cartridge combination needs a tracking force of two grams. It doesn't sound like much, but when you consider the minute size of the stylus tip, it's plenty. Now, before we go any further, ensure the bias dial is set to zero. We'll come back to this once we've set the counterweight. Place the gauge on the platter, unclick the tone arm and remove the cover from the cartridge. Rest the stylus on the appropriate point on the gauge, in this case, two. You want the gauge to balance on its pivot point unassisted. We advise making your adjustments from the tone arm in the armrest to avoid any potential damage to the cartridge. If the stylus pushes the gauge down, it's too heavy and you'll need to move the counterweight towards the back of the tone arm. If the gauge pushes the stylus up, it's too light, so move the counterweight forward. This part requires a little bit of care and patience, but it's important. Once you've got the gauge balanced, go back to your bias style. As the stylus runs through the groove of a record, it's pulled towards the center. The bias setting allows us to apply an opposite force to ensure that the stylus stays upright and reads both sides of the groove equally. This is vital for accurate stereo playback. Set the bias style to position two in order to match the tracking force. We're nearly there. Once you've fitted the dust cover using the supplied hinges, you'll need to decide how to connect your turntable to your amp, whether it's wired, wireless, or both. If you choose wired, remember that Alva ST has a switchable phono stage built in. A phono stage is a specialist piece of amplification equipment that can take the tiny level of current generated by the cartridge and amplify it to a level where a regular amplifier can work with it. Some amplifiers also have a phono stage built in, so if you already have a phono stage in your system, it is really important that the one inside Alva ST is switched to the phono position, as otherwise it will not only sound terrible, but it could also damage your speakers. If you need to use the Alva ST's built-in phono stage, make sure the switch is set to line. If you are unsure about this step, consult your owner's manual before making any connections. If you're going down the wireless route, you'll need to pair the Alva ST with a Bluetooth receiver, either a speaker, an amplifier, or a set of headphones. Ideally, your receiver should be Aptex HD certified, but no worries if not. The Alva ST supports standard Bluetooth connections. You just won't get the highest quality connection it's capable of. To start the pairing process, we advise turning off all Bluetooth devices other than the Alva ST and the device you want to pair it to. 
Turn on the Alva ST and press the Bluetooth pairing button located on the rear for two seconds. The blue LED will flash quickly to indicate it's in pairing mode. Once successful, the blue LED will stop flashing and will enter pair mode. A solid light indicates a standard Bluetooth connection, whilst long solid intervals indicates a higher quality Aptex HD connection. Once you've paired the turntable, it will automatically pair to the last device, so no need to go through the setup again. And that's it, you're all done. Now it's time for the fun part. Go and pick out that record you haven't listened to for ages, that one you really love. Turn the volume up, kick back and enjoy. You deserve it.